Hello and welcome to part 31 of my Let's Play series of videos for Dwarf Fortress. I am Sippy Cup. So let's see what's going on in the fortress today. Um, not a whole lot is new, but uh, one cool thing that I did, I will show you now. Uh, and that is my mist generator. Hey, so check it out, my mist generator is finally working. This is actually pretty sweet. I finally got uh, all my mechanical stuff figured out, and uh, now I'm spraying all that sweet, cool mist all over my dwarves. Oh yes, all over them. Alright, let's uh, take a look at what I did here. So, you can do this with either water wheels or windmills. I used windmills because, well, I figured it'd be easier to route power uh, down from here, since it's almost directly above where the mist generator is than from the river, which is over here, where I could put water wheels. The other thing is, I should always have wind, whereas this river seems to like to freeze up sometimes. So, Anyway, so basically, uh, the windmills up here... Um, well, here, first, let's look at something. When you build machine components, there's really only these things that you can build, and they fit together kind of like, uh, you know, connects or Lincoln logs or whatever, and it can be a little difficult and kind of uh, mind-boggling at first of how, how it all fits together, but I would encourage you to check out MagmaWiki, the df.magmawiki.com, because it'll kind of tell you um, where, you know, gear assemblies and everything need to be relative to your machinery to get it to work. So I actually had to go th through this a few times, assembling and disassembling things before I got it to work. But so basically what I have here is three windmills, and the windmills um, have directly below them a gear assembly. A gear assembly is just what it sounds like. It's an assembly of gears which transfers power to nearby axles and things like that. So what I have is actually two gear assemblies here and here. These are, you know, both below these two windmills. So the, these two gear assemblies here, which look like um, as kind of asterisks here, but you'll see if I unpause the game, uh, will actually animate. So let me pause it again. Um, then there's also another one below this guy here. So here's another gear assembly. Um, they all basically connect to this gear assembly, which is a gear assembly which is transferring power down Z levels uh, to my pumps that I've set up. So if I go down a level, I can see that directly below this gear assembly up here, I've got another gear assembly which is transferring power. When you want to move power more than one tile, you use an axle. An axle can be either horizontal or vertical. Don't make the mistake of thinking that this is horizontal and straight up and down is vertical. That's incorrect. They're technically, um, whether you orient it like this horizontally or like this up and down horizontally is controlled by um, when you, here, so I'll show you, press B, M for a machine components, capital M, when you make a horizontal axle, you have the ability to change its orientation. Now this doesn't tell you whether it's gay or straight, this tells you whether it's going to be north-south or east-west. And then you can, ch you know, change the length like so, and then you'll see if I change orientation it goes like this, right? So these are all horizontal axles, even though this looks vertical, you know, you're actually, keep in mind that vertical in this game refers to vertical in the sense of Z levels, not in X, Y. So anyway, uh, without going into that too much more, so here again, I have the power from this gear assembly going down to this one, which is then connected to this gear assembly by a horizontal axle, which are made out of wood. It's going down to now a vertical axle. Now, these span Z levels. Um, and an important thing to note is when you are transferring power down, um, you need to have those tiles channeled out. So you can't see it because the windmills are on top, but I've actually channeled out the center tile uh, underneath all of these windmills. Um, I had another one here actually when I originally built it, and I moved it for some reason, but I built a floor here so there wouldn't be a hole going into my fortress. But uh, there actually is a hole in the floor here if I press, oops, if I press K and go over it, you can see that there's open space. So now if I go down, um, there's open space here too. I've channeled it down to uh, allow me to have this vertical axle now, which goes down several Z levels, and eventually connects with this gear assembly here. 
this gear assembly is connecting and they're kind of obscured here but these are actually screw pumps so this gear assembly is powering this this screw pump and this screw pump and then the axle here and here are transferring power to these other screw pumps so basically what I have here is a one tile um, six unit you know thing of water basically which is getting pumped around in a circle and it's not losing any water because it's underground nothing is evaporating but I have this mist coming out here as you can see it kind of looks like a the same animation as a, a cloud of flies or whatever but this is soothing mist believe it or not and I'm sure all my dwarves will are thankful um, this this wall I just built here to house the original um, units of water which I pond filled but uh, I could remove this if I wanted and build another statue here now that this thing is in operation um, it will just keep going until something happens to my windmills it's very possible that trolls will come destroy my windmills in a siege or something anyways let me pause for yeah so I'm pretty surprised that following the last siege um, I, I, during which I only lost one dwarf um, you know I ended up not really losing too much uh, happiness um, there's only one guy right now who's miserable and I might even be throwing a tantrum but I don't think that anybody else is really unhappy enough at this point to uh, have me worry about a tantrum spiral I think my you know the quality of food that I've been giving the dwarves and the variety of alcohol and the nice rooms with masterpiece engravings and everything has uh, helped them keep keep calm in the face of uh, adversity so uh, they're pretty happy right now and I'm happy about that however you know that being said I kinda feel like ever since um, the last siege well the first siege I should say in which I lost a bunch of people and my my bridge was not destroyed but I just built wrong uh, let let people in um, I've been kind of more reactive than proactive about um, you know doing things in my fortress I've really just been kind of trying to take care of the wounded up here um, finish my mist system I've been building a ton of burial receptacles for my dwarves because they've been they've been dying a lot um, and I've got some available ones right now but I mean you can see if I go through here there's a lot of there's a lot of people here I've got hammer dwarves merchants recruits peasants even an elite wrestler in here I was sad to lose this guy axe dwarves you know there's there's a ton of dead people down here this will be my mausoleum I guess it, it started out as a room where um, I was just pulling a lot of limonite and stuff from uh, and here's the bottom of my well yeah and then I guess not really a lot else has changed um, I really have just got almost a full hospital here a lot of uh, sick and wounded a lot of blood for some reason the uh, the forgotten beast kinda made a beeline for my hospital I think he was not in the mood for a challenge he just wanted to kill <laughs> kill off everybody who was already weakened or something but weird thing is he came in here and he was just standing right about where this wrestler is right now and giving off his uh, you know boiling monster essence his noxious fumes and didn't really hurt that many people but it was like filling up this room and I was afraid that it would kill some of the people who were already on the verge of death but fortunately um, you know it only spread out a few tiles so well, this guy might have been getting clipped a little bit but uh, my hospital is a little bit better stock now I actually was able to make some soap uh, looks like I'm out of soap so I'll have to make some more but uh, oh, and some powder for cast too but you know splints crutches thread cloth I got it uh, and I'll make some more soap here shortly because I need to fight off infection I think actually one of my one of my militia guys who had been severely wounded in a fight with either goblins or the, the first forgotten beast that came had uh, an, a long uh, a long running infection which finally killed him it was weird he was like going strong for a long time and then he finally had said you know so and so has succumbed to infection and they died and it was sad he was only a recruit though he wasn't you know an axe lord or anything crazy and uh, I think I already pointed this out before but I've got a whole nice little zoo of goblins and baddies over here that I hope to dispatch sooner or later um, you know, all in all my fort's still pretty small I notice when I watch videos of other people's um, fortresses and I check out on uh, you know um, the Bay 12 forums and things it seems like everybody's really more spread out and I'm not sure whether that's better or worse I don't know I've just always kinda had smaller fortresses but and as you can see I've, I've just got I've got to make more bins I've just got too much crap um, maybe I need to forbid more stuff following sieges or something but 
So anyway, yeah, I mean, right now I'm just trying to kind of get my industry back in swing. I haven't really been producing much metal since the first siege. I've been really just, like I said, been kind to uh, trying to recover and uh, get everything kind of squared away. I've got this trap line corridor, and I think I might have even added some more recently. Um, I've got a bunch of military that's training. This might be one of the guys right here that has an infection, too. Let's see. Let's look at his wounds. He's missing his right lower arm and right hand. It's no good. Yeah, her right lower arm is gone. Lower body's dented. <clears throat> you can see also here, somebody pointed out to me, and I, and I knew about this, but I didn't. I neglected to mention it before. Uh, if you mouse over someone and show uh, do Z here, you can look at their health, and this will show you their medical history. So, Twitchy is missing his lower arm and hand. Actually, the, the dwarf is a woman, but it's named for a man. And let's see, you can see wounds here. He's got an infection in his lower body. Um, infection, oops, did not mean to do that. There we go. Yeah, if you resize, sometimes it flickers like that. Yeah, so he's got infection in a few different places. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to do about that. Since he's already kind of been treated, it's just kind of going. I guess if it gets bad, maybe he'll go back in the hospital. Hard to say. But he's got no treatment scheduled, and he's got a record here of all the different things he's... Uh, He's received uh, dressings and sutures and, you know, cleanings and whatnot. He got cleaned with donkey soap. It sounds like the kind of soap I would love to use. Donkey soap. All right, so... Oh, yeah, and uh, I guess the uh, Environmental Protection Agency will probably be after me because I'm just pretty much dumping all, all kinds of corpses and loot into the river here. I'm sure I'll get an earful about this sooner or later from some crybaby elf, but uh, anyway. Oh yeah, something that I don't know if I showed before is that I actually decided to just get rid of this bridge altogether. Um, you know, with building destroyers and stuff, um, and the fact that this thing freezes over, and the fact that I have this long corridor here that is just lined with traps, I didn't really see a need to have a bridge here anymore. Um, especially since, you know, there's no there's no trade caravans coming in here. Maybe I'll eventually build a depot and then you know build a bridge back. But for the time being, I'm just trying to protect the dwarves I've got. And let's see if I look at dwarf therapist. I have now 95 dwarfs. This is kind of a lot. Um, I'm still working through getting the nobles taken care of. I've now got a new a new noble here who is the uh, captain of the guard, who is my elite wrestler, who only has like one arm and one leg now. And I'm in the process of getting him set up. Let's see, he still needs, you know, office, dining room, chess cabinets, blah, 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 all this stuff. And he is down in the living area here. Wait, that's the mist generator. Where is he? Here, this is him. He's got, if you look real close, uh, you can, you know, zoom in or whatever if you want, but he's got some cool looking graphic. This is a nice little pixel art, and it looks like a uh, cloaked armored wrestler. Um, so, yeah, that's. That's pretty much all I got for right now. I'm going to just kind of be doing some spring cleaning and try to get my fort back in shape after the latest of siege and uh, try to get things in order for the next siege. All right, uh, if there's anything that you particularly wanted to see or if you wanted me to go over mechanics in a little bit more detail, uh, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, I'll probably end up getting back to doing some more tutorial stuff. I'm getting kind of mixed feedback. Some people prefer to just have kind of a let's play without too much of a heavy emphasis on tutorial. Some people prefer the tutorial. Um, I don't know, I mean, as I said before, there's only so much that you can really go into in the t tutorials. You know, a lot you just learn by doing, um, and once you've kind of learned the fundamentals, there's, you know, uh, you start running out of things to to really get detailed on. So, um, yeah, I mean, if there's specific things you want to requ request, you know, by all means, you can post either in my channel or, you know, in this video or whatever and I'll try to cover it uh, when an opportunity presents itself. Anyway, I uh, hope that this is still instructive and uh, entertaining in some way, and uh, that, is, that is it for today. Goodbye.